Well, hello there! I hope you're having an amazing day and that you're feeling ready and excited to extend your number literal knowledge with number systems. So, why wait? Let's get right into it! Just for your information, today I'm not going to start this video by answering the main question and that is what is a number system? Because I feel like every single video it's all the same. We just start our video by talking about the main question and answering it and then continuing our journey and extending on that topic. So today we are going to start things off by answering the question what number systems are supported by Rust? And here we have four different flavors. So the first number system that you probably are very familiar with is going to be decimal number system. And the base of this number system is number 10. So basically you have values that are available for us to use this number system that are in range from zero all the way to nine. And you can use these 10 digits to create any number out there. And as I already said, you should be very familiar with this one because this is our native way to represent numbers. The second number system is going to be binary. And this one we already covered in great detail in previous videos. So binary is going to be represented with only two options. You have zero and one. And basically because of that fact, we know that the base of this number system is going to be number two, because we have two different options that we can use to represent any number. The third option is going to be octal number system, where the base is number eight. So we actually have eight different digits that we can use to represent any number. So we're talking about numbers from zero all the way to seven. So 8 and 9 are not allowed to be used in octal number system. And our final option is going to be hexadecimal number system. So for the hexadecimal number system, we basically have 16 different options. So we're talking about numbers from 0 all the way to 9, as in decimal. But after that, we have A, B, C, D, E and F. And those values are used to represent numbers 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15, which is going to give us 16 different numbers. So right now, after we are done talking about different number systems that Rust supports, I think there is only one good thing left. And that is to jump straight to our Visual Studio code and cover them in practice. Great stuff! We finally managed to get to the point where we are going to get our hands dirty and play around in our Visual Studio Code environment. In front of us, we have a new project with a few examples that I prepared for this video that are supposed to tell us and show us how to use number systems and how to use them in practice. Yeah, but before we get started, I would like to get your attention and ask you to please take a look at the previous video where we discussed the basics about number literals because if you did not see it, you will probably not be able to get the most out of this video because in this video I take it that you already are familiar with the concepts that we covered in the previous video. So if you did not see it, please find it in the description of this video and when you are done watching it, come back to this one and continue our discussion. As in the previous video, we are going to start things off with a very boring example. We are not going to specify the number system, we are not going to specify anything. We are just going to create a variable and assign a value to it without any number literals. But we are going to create our second variable that's going to have exactly the same value, 123 assigned to it as our first variable. But before the value, you can see that we have a zero followed by small letter O. And after that, we add the value. This means 
that we basically want our compiler to observe this value as octal number, not as decimal number as is the case in our first variable. So to show you what happens behind the curtains in action, I'm going to run our program. And as you can see, for our first variable, we get 123, which is basically what we assign to it. What else would we get? Duh. And for the second one we get, what the hell? We get 83. But why is this the case? Well, because we are using octal number system instead of decimal one. If you are interested in finding out more about the octal system, please let me know in the comment section of this video and I'll gladly create a new video dedicated just to octal or hexadecimal or binary even to try to extend our basic understanding about these number systems. But let's get to our main discussion here. The fact that I added 0 O to our value means and tells our compiler that we want this number to be converted and observed as a octal number, not a decimal number. Okay, the third variable we have right here has the value FF. What? What is happening here? Are we working with letters or with numbers? Well, if you remember our discussion, letter F is a completely valid value for hexadecimal number system. So if you remember, we have values 0 to 9 and then we have A, B, C, D, E, F. So 0 to 9 and then from 10 to 15, we use letters. So letter F is a completely valid value for our hexadecimal number system. And as you can see, we are starting things off by introducing 0x. This part 0x means that we are working with a hexadecimal number system. And if I remove this 0x part, we will get an error. As you can see, as soon as I removed it and saved the file, our compiler starts complaining because the F is not a valid value for decimal number system. Because in decimal number system, we do not have any letters as valid values. And right now, I feel like I need to introduce another example in order to show you that when you specify that your number system is going to be hexadecimal one, you're not allowed to use any letters for the value. You have to use only the specified array of values that we already mentioned. So letters A through F. And if I specify the value as FG, we are going to get an error, as you can see in this example. So, everything seems to be working as expected. Our compiler is figuring out all the potential problems and mistakes that we are making in the process of assigning values to our variables that are using different number systems. But we are not done yet. You remember, we also have a binary number system. And to note to our compiler that we want to be using a binary number system, we are going to be using 0b as a prefix for our value. And after that, we are going to add a bunch of ones and zeros and basically we get our binary version of a number. Okay, so when we run our code, we are going to get some results here, but how do we know actually that we are getting proper values as results? Because we are not converting these values from octal to decimal or hexadecimal to decimal or binary to decimal to check if we are getting a correct result. So, to show you that it's actually working properly, let's use a simpler example. Let's create another variable. We are going to have a very simple binary number here, which is going to contain only a single one digit, and it's going to be on the fourth location. So if you remember, the 
value that is stored on that location is going to be 2 to the power of 3. To calculate how we got that is basically you start from the right side and you go towards the left. On the complete right it is 2 to the power of 0, then 2 to the power of 1, then 2 to the power of 2, then 2 to the power of 3. So basically on the fourth location we get 2 to the power of 3, which is 8. And let's check if we actually get 8 as a result of this variable. Let's run our code and ta-da! We actually got 8 as a result, which is expected. So right now I feel like we can actually trust our compiler and be certain that it's actually giving us meaningful results. Just one more thing to cover. I promise it's not going to take long. So right now I would like to show you that you can actually combine all number literals that we covered up to this point. So you can combine both number system literals with data type literals with underscore literals for separating our numbers. And if we take a look at our final example, we will see exactly the same value that was assigned to our binary example from above. And we have 0b specified, which means that we are working with a binary number system. We can see that we have underscores, which makes it much easier to read these binary values. And finally, we have specified U64 as a data type. And when we save the file, we can see that our compiler is going to infer the data type U64. And when we run the code, we will get exactly the same value as we got in the previous example with the same value assigned to it, which means that everything works as expected. And my job is done here. Of course, if you have any questions or concerns about any part of the stuff that we covered today, please let me know in the comment section below this video and I'll gladly try to help you out and explain everything in more detail. Welcome back, my dear friends! Right now, I hope that you have all the knowledge necessary for working with number literals. Right now, you should be able to specify number system using literals, you should be able to specify data type using number literals, and also you should be able to make your numbers much more humanly readable by introducing separators. And also, you should be familiar with two completely new number systems. I'm talking about octal and hexadecimal number systems. And again, a reminder, if you're interested in learning more about those, you can let me know in the comment section and I'll gladly film videos about those topics. And now I wanted to continue the way I started this video and to do things differently. And to do that, I'm going to just thank all of you beautiful people for subscribing to this channel and for liking all the previous videos because you guys are an amazing support and I'm so thankful for you and your efforts to let me know that you are enjoying these videos and that you find them useful which means a whole lot to me. So thank you for that once again. Ah, I almost forgot, I almost forgot to tell you what we are going to talk about in our next video. And in our next video, we are going to start a discussion about basic operators in Rust. And this is a very essential topic, a very important one. So I truly recommend you to join me in that video. And right now, I can only say, I wish you an amazing day. Goodbye.